Hi everyone, welcome back to Aidens Railways. Today we're going to have a look at my very first ever Continental model locomotive. So here we are down at the bench. Um, this is a second-hand bargain, I will call it, that I recently purchased. Um, it's a Roco locomotive. It'll, I think I remember rightly, I paid the price that's on the front of the box here at £30. It's not very often that you'll find a Continental locomotive at £30. Continental locomotives aren't necessarily my first choice normally when purchasing a model. But this one spoke to me. This one called out to me in the model shop. It wasn't in its box. The box was at the side, but it was out on display within one of the cabinets and it just it called out to me and I had to purchase it. So this is a Roco International HO locomotive armistice. I believe it's a class 150 from the French SNCF. I've tried to do a little bit of research on this loco and to be honest I've not really got an awful lot back. I believe I found quite a bit but the locomotives didn't look quite the same so I rather than use that information I've chosen to back off and we'll just focus on the model. So it's still boxed, the box has got significant wear to it as you can see here. It's had some use, it's it's not a new locomotive, it is second hand and it's probably been out for quite some time. If we lift the top of the box off there is an additional item sellotape there. I have no idea what it's for. I think I'll just leave it there because the locomotive runs perfectly fine and looks perfectly fine as well. So you can see it there in the packaging. Time to lift it out, I think. And it has got quite a significant amount of weight. As you can see, it is a 210 tender locomotive. I can tell you right now that the tender body, and I believe an awful lot of this chassis as well, on the tender is actually cast. It's not plastic, it is very much cast, it's very cold, it is very, very hard. It's a tender drive locomotive and it does have traction tires, or at least it's supposed to have traction tires. I have used it and it works perfectly fine without them, but as I said, it should have traction tires. So I'll take away this bubble wrap. If we have a look at the top, we can see a huge amount so in the interests of getting the camera to focus, I have removed the box. The camera really didn't like the box being there. It was trying to focus in on the writing. So as you can see there from the top, there is a huge amount of detail, incredible amount of detail in fact. A model that certainly isn't in any way, shape or form recent. There is an incredible amount of separately fitted detail in the way of pipe work all the way along and various fittings. You can see the handrails as well also are totally separately fitted. We've got a nice hefty coal load there at the rear as well as a large amount of molded detail as well so initially looking at this say let's just assume that this model is say 20 to 30 years old i have a feeling looking at the packaging that it's it's got to be around that if not slightly older for that age this has got an incredible amount of detail which kind of shows up british manufacturing at the time seen as this seems to w totally outweigh that also explains a lot of the cost involved in continental modeling let's just take a look from the side so there we can see the 210 wheel arrangement and the rather strange, if not slightly different from the UK arrangement at the rear of the tender. There are six wheels, three axles, but if you can see, they're not evenly spaced out across the tender, which is something that I'm not used to seeing, say in the UK. This was uh, completely different to me when I actually saw this. If I have a focus on a bit at the tender, you can see there's an incredible amount of rivet detail and this is a cast tender body there is totally cast it is absolutely solid you can see there's a little bit of print detail there's not a huge amount of print detail on here but i don't think there really was a lot of detail in the way of writing on these locomotives from the images i've been able to see on the internet but we've got all of the rivet detail as well across the chassis the spring suspension and axle boxes all of this is cast absolutely solid and you can see the steps there as well we we'll focus our attention onto the locomotive a bit we can see that we've got, and I'm assuming these are air pumps, they certainly look like air pumps, and we've got cylinders here. The wheel arrangement of 210, the actual wheels themselves, the flanges are really quite small. Obviously it's HO, so they're slightly scaled down compared to our usual 176 double O. The valve gear, etc., is absolutely beautiful. It is really fine. It's quite delicate, you can see it is. It's been put together wonderfully, and it has survived the test of time when you uh, think about the age that this must be. So moving slightly further forward to the body of the locomotive, you can see the side of the cab here has got a large amount of cab riveting handrails. We've got our glazed window there at the front. Huge amount of rivets and pipe work and handrails running all the way along the side of the locomotive. 
as well as our reversing gear here. There's even taps on the detail that are on the top of the locomotive boiler there, along with these separately fitted pipe work. And you can see the size of that running board, which is textured as well. So it's got that feel as if it's similar to like a checker plate. There's additional pipe work running alongside of the tender here that wasn't on the opposite side. The doors there towards the cab, they are actually part of this molding where well, i say molding this casting which is absolutely solid we can see additional tanks running along the side of the locomotive even more pipe work now now some of this pipe work at the back is molded onto the boiler but a lot of it across here is all separately fitted and we've got all these handrails running all the way along lovely handrail along the cab here all that rivet detail as well and the print on both the tender and the cab at the base of the locomotive which is incredibly shiny on camera by the looks of it the brake rigging is already fitted a lot of it's actually molded onto the bottom of the chassis and you can see here at the rear of the tender you can see all of the gearing for all six wheels are driven by the motor in the tender there is one traction tire still there they're missing from this one this one and this one the center axle doesn't seem to actually have traction tires these look very similar in size to that say of the class 37 from hornby and lima so i imagine traction tires for this will be quite easy to get a hold of you can see here at the back we have got what i would call the more common continental coupling hook there it's sort of like a, a hoop and eye and at the front we have something altogether completely different which looks more decorative than it is functional although it could be functional and could be very wrong. Let's take a look at the rear and I'm gonna try and hold this up as best I can considering just how heavy this tender is. So you can see this is a cast tender body and on that body it's got some substantial steps on it, some molded pipework. You can see the lamps which really do look like lamps off uh, that would fit onto a lamp iron and we've got some handrails there as well. Handrails do appear to be separately fitted. The coupling will be very easy to change if I wish to put a uh, UK standard D-shaped coupling on or something similar to NEM. Um, that should be quite easy, but I think I might be leaving that on because I'm going to look for some rolling stock just to run with this locomotive. We have got some buffers, nothing sprung or anything like that, but they're very much there and very much visible. If I move to the front of the locomotive and you can see that coupling again, and you can see two more lamps there fitted to the front. Some imitation coupling hook, and it is a coupling hook, which gives me the impression that this coupling on the front of the locomotive is a different type of continental coupling for model railways we've got the steps up to the smoke box door the smoke box door has got a lovely amount of detail on it and it's got it it's equivalent of a dart with a big large round handle on there for opening the smoke box door there's something about the continental model locomotives that appealed to me and have done as a child but i have it's only now that i've actually uh took the plunge and bought one but it was second hand and it was at a very good price whether it's the black and the red i don't know it's got a certain feel to it of the american s160 although that was a 280 different type of tender it's a different type of locomotive but it did have that kind of look about it it has got a certain amount of look that it would be used in say world war ii that sort of thing there's just something about this locomotive that called out to me so obviously the tender is tender drive which means that if i lift this loco body just a slightly and turn those wheels you can see that they move wonderfully smooth and you can see that valve gear moving as well there we go you can just see how smooth that really is so this is my first continental locomotive french that's a Roco, which up till now is the only Roco locomotive or model I have. I had been tempted to get a hold of the Roco S160, but the only thing that holds me back the whole time is the fact that it's HO. It wouldn't be double O and it wouldn't fit in with my other locomotives of that period. In saying that, I bought this, but if I run this, I intend to run it with rolling stock HO and something in fitting with it. So it'll probably run on its own if I do run it, just purely to keep it sort of within scale. Bargain price of 30 pounds. Tell me what you think in the comments. Um, let me know if you've got any similar or you might even have one of these. Do you like the Continental locomotives? Let me know if you do or you don't. Would you be tempted with something like this at the right price like that? As always, like, comment and share. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you do, click on that bell icon and you will be notified every time 
I upload a video. I've put a video at the top of the screen and there's a playlist at the bottom. And I'll see you again soon with some more Model Railway related items.